Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with band leader Stefan Kuhn of the jazz group Pacific Mambo Orchestra. We caught up with him in late April 2020 to talk about the band and this COVID-19 world of no live music. This outfit is a Latin-flavored orchestra full of celebration and celebrity. They have been around for 10-plus years and got some well-overdue recognition in 2014 when their crowd-funded, self-titled debut album took home the Grammy for Best Tropical Latin Album. We cover some good ground, so enjoy. Hi, Stefan. It's Joe Domino with Neon Jazz. Hey, Joe. How are you? Hey, good, man. What's going on? Oh, man. <laughs> Not too much, actually. Yeah. <laughs> So where where are you located exactly? Uh, we, we, uh, I'm in the Bay Area in Concord, California. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. That's, you uh, out of Kansas City? Yeah, I'm out of Kansas City. In fact, that one of my favorite jazz stations, KCSM, out there. I listen to it every day. Yeah, yeah. Chewy yeah. is a good friend of mine. Like they're all oh, really yeah. good good people there. Yeah. Yeah, I love Chewy. Yeah, he gets in there and you get to hear the love in his voice for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's um, he's a very very cool guy. Yeah, very cool. Well, hey man, thanks for taking a few minutes out. It's, it's oh, kind yeah. of a weird, you know, just a very strange time in our history. So yeah, talk, man. Talk to me a little bit about you know projects, anything that's out, anything that's going on with you. Yeah, you know it's um it yeah it, it, exactly. So I'm a uh, well, I'm co-leading the Pacific Mambo Orchestra first off uh, with my friend Christian Tumalan, who is the piano player and the music director of the band. And uh, I've taken up more like the behind-the-scenes stuff. You know, for example, I'm um, I'm doing the radio promotion for the new album. It's called The Free Side. And um, so I'm, I've, I've taken that on. And... Um, We've been in the charts for about 10 weeks now, which is really, really great in the Jazz Week, Jazz Week charts. And, uh, and I've been talking to all, all the, the DJs and, and radio station programmers about exactly that, you know, how grateful we are to have radio play our music. You know, I mean, like making a record is uh, a huge undertaking. You know, we're independent. We don't have a record label. We don't have any, any financial support. This is all, uh, PMO's own money that we're siphoning off the gigs and, and CD sales and such, you know. So, uh, this record took a, a year and a half to make and, um, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And then <laughs> the pandemic hit and all this, and we had gigs lined up for the summer, like big stuff, you know, and it's all canceled. And all of a sudden you're stuck with a, with a really good record that we're really proud of. And, uh, it's it's kind of dead, you know, or it's not because we get radio play and we get interviews uh, like yours. Um, we get PR stuff, we get, um, you know, CD reviews. So it's not really dead like that. So we're very, very grateful for all that. <clears throat> yeah, I dig it. and I But I guess that's the thing out of all of this is that reality, you know, the reality of it is, is that the way this music thrives is live, but it just simply can't happen right now. So you got to make do with what you have. And I exactly. think that's the thing that I've been realizing more and more talking to musicians is I, there's always been an appreciation for radio, but I think now there's an appreciation for it. It's totally different because if you think about the way our world is, there's very few things that are a hundred percent safe and what's safer than sitting in front of speakers and having radio waves come into your body. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. It, it just is. And we have that latitude with technology to cover it. I know personally, I've been really trying to keep up with how things are going. I know it's, it's working on everybody in different, different ways, but I think during this time, it's good to acknowledge, you know, those that have fallen to COVID-19 acts that are still out there, the hope that we have when we get back into a live environment. I think that's very yeah. cathartic and, and it's very needed for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a, a seismic shift that we're we're in, in the middle of right now, and and <laughs> nobody really knows what the outcome will be. I mean, I know for sure that um, we'll we'll be the last ones to open back up. You know, meaning live concerts in front of a crowd. You know, and uh, that I I I'm not getting my hopes up for playing anything this year, to be honest. You know, because people will be scared to go out, and I hope I'm wrong. 
I really do. But uh, you know, I'm 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 a realist, and it's the, the the way it goes. I just don't see it happening, you know, like in in, yeah. in the near future, in the next few months. And yeah, I mean, if we're we're looking at closures of clubs, music venues that just can't sustain themselves without concerts, and will they be there when we're opening back up? That's the thing. Um, it's it's very. Well, I mean, if I let myself go, I I get really worried, you know. So I need to look at, well, maybe embrace what's next without knowing what it is and uh, just hope that that the change that will come uh, will be a positive one, maybe that people will appreciate live music more. Uh, which I really hope, and I, I feel like this might be one of the outcomes um, that that people really realize, you know, what they do not have right now, and uh, hopefully support that on the on the other end. Um, like I said, I mean, there's like, you know, we're all talking to each other and say, "What's your theory? What do you think?" You know, to to have full people like me, they <laughs> they hope for the best and and. The, the glass half empty is they they quit music you know yeah it's uh yeah. it's it's a very interesting time yeah and i think the thing that's interesting about this is is that when we look back on the history of jazz you know a love supreme and a lot of really great albums and musicians came out of a really bad racial time where there were riots and clubs mm-hmm. were burned to the ground and there was a lot of strife and uncertainty that went into it you know i think sometimes We've probably been insulated to a certain degree from a lot of things that the rest of the world uh, feels. And right now, this is probably one of the very unique times, as another musician put it, the Independence Day movie moment where everybody bands together against Mm -hmm. the virus and we all have to find a way out of it. But, you know, it's like anything, you know. My my mantra throughout all this is is that it's life after all. And no matter what you feel and how you feel things should go or whatever it is, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta make it work, man. That's all you can do. You gotta make it work. Yeah, yeah, and and we'll have to be very creative and really find new ways uh, of how to how to be. I mean, it, it, it is gonna be different. There's no way we can go back to 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 the same. I mean, this is not how time works. Time time is progressive, and it's always forward, you know. And we, I I don't think we'll go back to like. Well, whatever it was, where, where we where we stopped, you know, I, I I don't think, like I said, you know, there will be closures of venues. Uh, I just heard that Life Nation, like Saudi Arabia, bought like a five hundred million dollar stock in Life Nation. So I don't know what that means, but I'm just saying, you know, things will progress and move forward into an uncertain future, and uh, and and we're we're we we will be part of shaping shaping our own future so um i'm i'm writing music right now like crazy you know it's like i i need to participate in 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 a positive vibe and keep creating music you know and not sit on my butt and 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 be depressed you know that's not going to get me anywhere We, we are responsible for our future so it's not like we're not helpless, or I let me let me speak for myself. I I refuse to be helpless, and uh, I believe in being being able to shape my own destiny. And I always I always believe that, you know. And that's what I'm saying I'm gonna put out new music, and and continue to be part of the creative process. I've been hearing really positive stories about how clubs up in New York are getting a lot of donations. I think there's going to be a lot of people. I mean, that's the thing. The thing about jazz is is it's not a a realm of the arts or music that makes a lot of money to begin with. I mean, musicians aren't in it because, oh, man, I'm making this massive paycheck. They're in it for the love of it, which is the thing that reassures me about the spirit of jazz is that there's always going to be innovation and people that are willing to learn and learn and refine and make music. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it'll be. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if, if I want you to quote me here, but it's going to be uh, dar- darwinistic in, in a certain sense. You know, like the, the strong will move forward and, and the weak probably will fall off. 
you know, so there will be a, uh, I mean, this is all hypothetically, obviously, this is my opinion, or what I'm thinking about, let's put it that way, that um, the people that really want, want it and do it for the love of music, they will continue to do that, uh, maybe in a stronger way and in a more convincing way than before. And uh, people that do it as a hobby, they might fall off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how it pans out, man. Like I said, it's, we're we're in completely uncharted territory here, and everybody has an opinion how it might pan out. But uh, we'll, we shall see. Yeah. Well, I I think that's the thing about this. After it began, there was, you know, it was very clear in the beginning. All right, we're shutting down. This is this has got to this has got to happen. And then there has been new developments every week, and now I think we're kind of at a point of ambiguity. Even though there's states and places that are opening up we're, we're just not sure how all of that's going to work out so i think it's uh so i guess i got two questions for you and i'm this interview and my my thing here is going to be a little bit more centric on you know what's going on in the world right now so around you know mid-march when this started happening how did you start finding out about gigs getting shut down and, and really kind of absorbing the realization of this well i mean it was it was it was <laughs> That's a good question, man. Um, somebody just said, you know, when we shut down, we threw a switch. When we'll open back up, it's going to be a dial. Um, so a, a switch was thrown. All of a sudden, it kind of came out of nowhere, man. I can't even re- remember because it's, a, it's been such a blur, kind of. Uh, with Pacific Mambo Orchestra, we had gigs on the books. And... Um, and they got canceled pretty much in the first couple of weeks or so. We had like a, um, <clears throat> let me see, like a Facebook event here in the Bay Area. Um, we were supposed to go to New York, play for the Carnegie Hall Music Series. That got canceled pretty quickly. Um, we have a gig in France lined up. Um, yesterday we learned that the, the president, um, is closed on all the events until September. We haven't heard from the festival yet, but it's clear that it's not going to happen. So it, it was that was kind of gradual. So we have like one more in July here in the Bay Area, which they're holding out on it, but there's no way that this is going to be be allowed. So it, it was kind of gradual. My my personal gigs. Um, also, one after another, it's just within like two or three weeks or so, um, people just just canceled. There were weddings, you know, for the summer and that, and that you know, um, yeah, and, and and one one by one, just just fell away and got canceled, and and everybody's just like, Jesus Christ, what's going on? You know, I mean, there's friends of mine, they play exclusively, they're totally screwed. You know, and uh, some of the musicians don't have any savings. They just live from paycheck to paycheck or gig to gig. They're completely screwed. Um, everybody is looking for assistance, financial assistance. Um, I I can teach from home. I do online lessons, so I'm kind of in a in a uh, in decent shape financially. But it's more about the spirit of playing that really gets to me. I have to say, I really really miss it. You know, playing with friends, playing for an audience, exchanging music, you know, tapping into each other's music and spirit. You know, and it's like that that's a big part of me that, that I don't have right now. But I'm like, I'm getting sidetracked here a little bit. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You, the, the, you got the thing I'm doing with these interviews, just so you know, it's like what you guys do on stage. This is improv, man. This is raw. This is not a time that we're ever probably going to experience again and this is this, this is truth that's all there is to it so you're good it's all good yeah okay okay yeah yeah um joe i, I i've been hearing from your questions um that you're i are, are you under the assumption that we're a jazz group well you're you're an you're an outfit i mean you're 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 a little bit bigger i mean you're you're quite sizable that that's that's my understanding of how you guys roll. We're a Latin, a Latin big band. Not, yeah, not exactly. Yes, big band. So when you say like improvisation uh, on stage, that's a very small part. We're more like, um, you know, it's more arranged. 
what we do uh, more commercial actually. So there is, I wouldn't, we have a lot of jazz elements in our music as far as, you know, chord structures, chord progressions and such, you know, but the improvisational part is not that prominent in our music, I should say. I mean, we, we do improvise on every tune more or less when we play live. So maybe you're right. Okay, so yeah, I'll take it back. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I guess it's I guess it's more of what you you're a practitioner of what I consider one of the higher level of music arts out there. Whether it's something that is a little bit more refined on stage or not, I just I find you all as a very tight knit collective, just adding to that flavor of of jazz and and what's uh-huh. going on. So yeah, 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 um, yeah. okay, but. Uh, but at any rate, you know, one thing I did kind of want to ask, too, is, is that, you know, we're all eventually going to get back. You know, the question is when, but we're going to get to that day. We're going to be like, all right, we're back. The audience yeah. is back and we're back. What revelations, what what uh, silver linings do you hope we all gain? You've kind of said it a little bit, but I guess I just want to ask up front, what do you hope both musician and audience member gets from this time away? You know, I've been, I, I've been thinking about this very, very deeply, actually. Um I think when I get back on stage, I'll, I don't know, I'll probably break down and cry <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with, with yeah. gratitude, with gratitude. You know, it's like uh, the, the appreciation uh, for what we do gets lost in, in the hustle. Sometimes the, the, uh, the spirituality of music. And it, it, very often and too often, really, it, it, uh, becomes a hustle for, you know, signing that contract, you know, negotiating the fees, you know, like, can we have single rooms instead of double rooms? Where's the food at? You know, I do all the contractual work, you know, and I, I, I get lost in, um, the, the, the deeper meaning of, what music really is, you know, which is, is no doubt in my mind is, is spiritual, you know, because it touches people, it touches everybody, you know, and it's, it's, it's not an inanimate, uh, subject, you know, it's alive, it's, it's energy. And, and so I think my, my appreciation for what I do, uh, has, has come back into the foreground and I want to keep it there from now on. And, uh, and put all the other stuff on, in the back seat. And like I said, you know, I mean, negotiations and contractual work is all very necessary, but it should not be the priority. So I think what I'm getting from all of this is like, we're all, we're all getting lost in the daily hustle for, for the buck, for the money. So we, 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 you know, survive and have food on the table and such, you know? And uh, I think this will change in, for, for myself forever. You know, I think when, when I, from now on, I get back on stage, I think I'll walk, I'll walk on that stage with a, a, a deeper appreciation for uh, what it really means for me um, and, and for others. So that's what I'm feeling right now. That, that comes up every single day for me. Well, hey, man, I, I really appreciate you taking some time out. Um, as I said, I feel like this is very necessary to have an open dialogue with the jazz world and to uh, yeah. you know, kind of work through this and, and let people know that everybody's still out there doing the best they can to get through it. I think that's the thing about being united in this. So thanks for, uh, thanks for your time. Um, oh, thank you for reaching area. out. You know, it's, it's, it's good for me to talk about it too. It's not good. just for you and, I, uh, you know, and, and have, have, have somebody that has an open ear and understands subject matter. <laughs> anyway, yeah. man, I, I just wanted to thank you as well, you know, to, uh, for, for playing music and, and bringing it to the people. If people want to help, they should really purchase music, not stream it. That's one of yeah. my big, big things, you know, the streaming doesn't work for the artist. It works for the consumer. Not for the artist, uh, it's really a bad situation for most of us. The streaming is like, it's not happening. It's not yeah. a model that can be sustained. So if you want to toss that out there, <laughs> you know, download, yeah. download music, make it yours, buy it, purchase it, you know. That would be my, well, my closing. 
Yeah, well, I'm going to keep this part in, and it'll be coming from you, but I've been hearing that. That's been a reverberating sentiment from musicians. But I do want to refine, too. I've really been doing this for you guys, too. This isn't a self edifying thing. This is a real, I think it's a two-way avenue, but I really think it's very important to discuss. And I uh, just, you know, all around, I think it's good for everybody to talk about this. But. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in the Bay Area, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Stefan for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. <laughs> Neon Jazz.